In the last several lessons, I have explained how you can use conditional statements like the if statement in order to skip over code. We know that this works by trying to evaluate an expression as true or false. If it evaluates to true, then the code inside the block is executed, and if it evaluates as false, then that block of code is simply jumped over. For example, intuitively the way you read this is if the height is equal to 5, then do what is in here. However, that is not really the case. A conditional statement is really a conditional jump over. That is to say, if the result of the if statement evaluates as false, then you jump over the block of code, otherwise you naturally execute what is inside the block of code. So the intuitive way of understanding it is wrong, and the right way of understanding it is to say, if height is not equal to 5, jump over it. It is important to understand that all conditional statements have built-in go-to statements that you can't see. The go-to statement will jump over the block of code when the conditional statement evaluates to false. If it evaluates to true, then there will be no jump, and therefore the very next instruction will execute, like I've shown you before. Let's take a look at this example. Here, if height is equal to 5, then the printf statement will execute the same as if there had not even been an if statement. What the if statement is really saying is that we might want to jump over the printf statement and to do so if height is not equal to 5. Alright, so now let's continue. In our last example, we saw a simple example of a loop. The example we looked at was an infinite loop where the last instruction simply said to start over. Now let's look at a more concrete example. The most basic type of loop is the while loop. And the way it works is very simple. You have a block of code. You have the keyword while, which defines that it's going to be a while loop. And then you have your conditional expression inside of parentheses just like an if statement. We'll make our condition if height is less than 10. So the way this works is the last instruction of the block of code is actually a jump back to the conditional statement. So let's take a look at this in action with a sample program. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called height, assign it the value of 5, and now we're going to create a while loop that says while height is less than 10, we're going to execute the printf command hello reddit with a new line character and then at the very end we're going to make height equal to height plus 1. So when this starts height is going to be 5. Then the conditional expression is going to execute is height less than 10. And then Assuming that height is less than 10, you'll execute what is inside the block of code, which means you're going to print hello reddit, then you're going to add 1 to height, and then at the very end you're going to jump back and do it again. So each time you do it, height is going to grow by 1, which means pretty soon height will not be less than 10, and that is why this is not an infinite loop. Now let's go ahead and run this program so you can see what happens and you'll notice that it has printed hello reddit five times. Now this is another example of where the way you might read code intuitively differs from how it is actually taking place at the machine code level. Let me show you this example. So what I've done here is I've placed the while statement as it's written in C at the top and I placed the machine code instructions more or less at the bottom, although I've, I've made it easier to read. So what you're basically going to have is you're going to have a memory address that is the start of the loop, then you're going to compare height and 10, and then if height is greater than or equal to 10, you're going to jump to end of loop, which means here. Now, did I just make a mistake in saying greater than or equal to? No, the reason it's greater than or equal to is remember that the default behavior of a conditional statement is to enter the block of code. So what your conditional statement is really doing is it's deciding when to jump over the block of code. 
If height is less than 10, it's just going to execute what, it's, what is inside here. If height is greater than or equal to 10, then it will jump over it. So that is why we say if height is greater than or equal to 10, then we're going to go to the end of the loop. Otherwise, it's just going to print hello Reddit and increase height by 1. So take a look at this for, for a minute or so and make sure you understand it. Pause the video if you need to. But what I need you to understand is that when you have a conditional statement followed by a block of code, the normal behavior is to enter the block of code. You only jump over the block of code if the condition is not met. So here, if we're testing height less than 10, we would jump over the block of code in the event that height is greater than or equal to 10. Remember that this conditional statement is not a conditional proceed, it is a conditional jump over. The default behavior of your CPU is always to proceed to the next instruction. We use a conditional statement only to change that behavior. To have a machine code instruction that says go into the block of code if this is true is just a waste of resources since that is the default behavior anyways. Therefore we say greater than or equal to in this case because that is the condition which would cause us to jump over the block of code. Here is the same example written slightly different. The way your machine is going to understand this is compare height to 10, go to end of block if height is greater than or equal to 10 and otherwise it's just simply going to flow into the block of code. Now I've added braces here just so you can better, better see how the braces correspond to this. So with a while loop Every time you reach the end of the block of code, you return to the beginning where a simple question is asked. Do we jump over the block of code this time? If the answer is yes, then you go to the end of the block of code and whatever instructions follow the block of code are what is going to execute next. If the answer is no, then you simply enter the block of code, which is the default behavior. You execute the, the instructions inside the block of code and then you jump back and repeat the question. So let's again go back to our sample program. So now you should understand exactly how this works. When we get to the while loop, we ask the question, do we jump over the block of code? No, because height is not greater than or equal to 10. Therefore, we're going to print hello Reddit. We're going to add one to height. Now height will be six because it started as five. And now we're going to jump to the start of the block of code again and we're going to ask the question do we jump over the block of code no because height is not yet greater than or equal to 10 so we're going to execute the instructions and so on once we have done this five times it will come to pass that the next time we read through these instructions height will now be set to 10 because each time we loop we're adding one to height therefore the conditional statement will now evaluate like this height is no longer less than 10 therefore jump over the block of code and that ends our loop so in this lesson I've introduced you to the first and simplest kind of looping statement the while loop and we learned that a while loop is effectively a go-to statement built into a conditional statement the conditional statement is evaluated every time the loop executes including the first time and the loop will repeat itself until the conditional statement evaluates as false. And that concludes this lesson.